Okay, it's father time. Getting ready to take off on a 17-hour flight from New Delhi, India to John F. Kennedy. It's a flight I fly a lot in the 777-300. We'll talk more about this airplane and why it's necessary to have this one. But this is going to be an explosive depressurization tutorial telling you some of the things we have to look at depressurizing, not only in the Himalayas but around the world. Uh, but I already flew this once. It came, video came out good. I thought I had the Oral warning silence. But let me show you something. This is right out of the operating manual. It's the master warning reset switch. Silences the oral tones associated with cabin altitude. So we're going to have an explosive depressurization and descend down on the depressurization route, which we'll talk about ad nauseum. And um, it's not going to work. It's not going to. This doesn't silence. Uh, maybe it will this time, but it's supposed to. But the only alternative is to go below 10, down around 9. The only problem is, as we make our way over to Tashkent, Uzbekistan, on the divert, some of the train is above 9, so we have to go in and out of the warning. But at the minimum, the first 25 minutes or so that we get this, you're going to be hearing the oral warning going off. Let's hope it works this time. But I'm redoing the video just so that that last chunk doesn't have it going off. Um, doing that for you. Um, anyway, just a heads up on that. It's very frustrating because I really like the way the video came out last time, but you would it would have driven you crazy. All right, uh, a little bit about the takeoff. You know what? Let's set this sort of a better window seat here. All right, get this all set to go. That's a good window seat. We'll be looking at the Himalayas later. Okay. Um, Engine out is 1610, field elevation is 800. There's no engine out procedure. You have two giant runways here to come back to. We are at max takeoff weight at 775 or 774. Our initial cruise altitude is 30,000. The MEA on the uh, route going through the Himalayan corridors is 29, so that's the, actually the lowest we can go in this direction. We can barely make it, as you can see. Our, they recommended 28, our max is 31. So we're right up against it. Uh, you can only go through here if you have 22 minutes of oxygen, which is why we're in the 300 and not the 200. Very few airplanes that can actually fly in this corridor because you have to have 22 minute oxygen system. Have a low altitude level off of 2600, which makes it challenging. Uh, we usually get the autopilot on pretty early. It does a nice job as you clean up. Without further delay, obviously, I, it's going to be two and a half hours before we get to Uzbekistan on a divert. So I'll be pausing it a lot, going up and walking the dog and getting a cup of coffee coming back to you to show the beautiful Himalayas um, as we the terrifying Himalayas as well we fly this at night so we don't get to see it very much um, often but I think you'll see they're pretty spectacular and you'll see why this is such a critical area but anyway let's go learn about explosive depressurization today parking brakes are off flaps are set RTO I think there's nothing to do but go to Kennedy. I don't think we're going to make it to Kennedy. Got a bad feeling about this one. It's 50%. Toga. Let's go. <clears throat> Your speed alive. 80 knots for checking for acceleration, right? Same as always. Yeah, super heavyweight, uh, usually rotating with about 3,000 feet left at checks. No clogged static ports today, or pedal tubes today. Here's coming up. Direct boot top. There's actually a SID here, but they don't have it in the database. They're limited at uh, what they're showing us here in New Delhi. It's an NADP2 uh, climb, um, so you just clean up just like in the US here. Power is coming back to climb power. Uh, well, it's actually coming back to cruise because it's going to be. Uh, Leveling off at 2600. Over here, you got to lead the flaps quite a bit, or you'll overspeed. 
so we'll go flaps up here I've preset 280 um, in reality you tell them that you needed that for operational reasons flaps count up to zero it's slowing down to 240 until those flaps go all the way up and there you go and we call the daily departure it's American 293 heavy level at 2600 I'll spare you my Indian accent which I can't do very well and uh, that's it usually they have you do that just level her 2600 we're clean I have to take off climb check now what we're gonna do is come in here we're gonna go right up to 30 you get into uh, Pakistan that's Lahore Pakistan's airspace pretty quickly okay and you're required to contact them 10 minutes prior so we would actually be on the other radio remember we have four persons in the cockpit one of the most experienced cockpits you're ever going to fly with it's usually two captains and two very senior fo's and uh so you have about 130 140 years of flying experience in the cockpit and it's great to fly with guys who have been here before because you gotta especially when i'm the captain just because you can leave the cockpit knowing they know all the idiosyncrasies of flying this but um anyway that's not why we're here we're here to talk about explosive depressurization so i'm going to let this fly out guys lnav vnav and i'm going to show you a little bit about the route of flight today all uh, right let me just minimize this and minimize that and here is my study guide um the airplane's flying in the background by the way close out some of these windows i was doing a lot of prep work this is my study guide i made out for the uh, pilots i was one of the first ones to fly delhi from new york and so I was, I made up this guide because it was very complicated with the duty day, flight time limitations, etc. cetera. Um, don't worry, we are actually, uh, airplane is flying behind the scenes, so we don't have to worry about it. But anyway, um, this study guide takes them from takeoff at Kennedy all the way to landing in the opposite way too. So here's New Delhi over here. Um, we're going to fly around uh, Pakistan. This is Afghanistan here. This is the Himalayan corridor, very famous Himalayan corridor. MEA, minimum end route altitude, is flight level 290. So that puts you, gives you 2,000 feet mountainous train clearance. Um, Mount Everest is back in here. That's, of course, up over 29,000. But the, the mountain's here around 27, so 29 is the MEA. We'll be flying up here. Now, there's all sorts of points which we'll talk about, about if you lose pressurization or lose an engine. We'll discuss that a lot. Uh, the whole video is going to take probably an hour 20 with a lot of pauses. But we're going to end up... You, diverting over here around and up into Tashkent Uzbekistan these are the stands so a route of flight takes us out of New Delhi India around Pakistan will be with Pakistan control which is Lahore um, Afghanistan will be off to our left that's Kabul but we don't talk to them sometimes we have to deviate over there though and then up here is Dushanbe in a normal situation we go all the way around Afghanistan take a left and fly across the stands uh, Turkmenistan Uzbekistan and then Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, all the way across Turkey, Caspian Sea, Black Sea, up over, um, this is Turkey over here, up through Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, Germany, Hungary, Germany. Sometimes we go up north, up over Denmark, and come up across uh, Keflavik and uh, Greenland, and then down over Newfoundland. Sometimes a little south over France, coast out over Scotland or England. That depends on the winds. In the routing anyway that's our route of flight most complicated parts right here getting out on your duty day of 18 hours flight hours um which is a waiver it used to be 17 21 hour duty day it gets gets tight it's a very heavyweight takeoff it's a lot about that we already talked about that um this is my advice advisements to my friends um these are some of the at the diversions in the turkey area very very few places you can land for about four and a half hours so I discuss that a lot for the guys. Medical diversion considerations. We have about 30, 40 wheelchairs on the flight with 300 passengers. So uh, you really got to know where you go in the event of a medical emergency. Um, sometimes it's better to keep going on a longer way because it's more dangerous to divert. I went through the trouble of making up diversions. Uh, this is pictorial of it, all the different airports available. You can see here's India. Look through here. There's very few that are adequate. Uh, when you get up into Western Europe, all sorts of places you can go. It's purple or adequate, uh, red or emergency. 
But you do this whole stretch here. There's only a couple of emergencies, a couple of adequates up here. But look at that. Uh, not many places to go. Um, these are some data on all the different countries in chronological order coming from Kennedy. Uh, the runways they have, the population, that's an indication of the medical facilities, like uh, Ireland, Dublin, uh, you know, 32 million people in the area are going to have uh, good medical facilities, but you get into Svalbard, uh, Norway, it's 154,000, maybe not so much. Anyway, you get the idea. That's that. Like I said, the, air, the flight is moving along behind us. I'll be pausing after I discuss this. This is just some key frequencies and uh, the centers you're talking to and the countries they're associated with. Um, and this is the routing. This is where we're going to do all the, the stuff today. Took off out of New Delhi. This is our actual routing today. P500, G500, uh, the two characters, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Dushanbe up here, and uh, Tashkent, Uzbekistan is what I'm going to divert to. So it's up in this area that I'll come back in about an hour, and uh, we'll look at a divert right around this area between Jerry and Farouz. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit more about that here. And it's going to be a, down here and all the way around some high terrain into Tashkent. Very long flight. As, as I mentioned, with that master warning not working properly, I may have to descend down to 9,000. It's going to be kind of hairy in and out of the horn. But the first 20 minutes, unless that thing works this time and silences it, you're going to hear that horn. I'm disappointed about that. I've turned the cockpit volume down all the way. Uh, I don't know if that will help. Anyway, this is the depressurization profile, which we'll be talking about. Normally, you uh, depressurize anywhere. Just, just you know, look, take a look at this. We're, we're climbing out, okay? We're all good. Everyone's happy. As a matter of fact, I'll get the uh, lights off up here while I'm thinking about it. Not much lookout out the window. Well, let's, even though I said that, let's take a look out. Pretty flat here, right? So when we get up here, we're going to start seeing the Himalayas come into view in about an hour. And it gets pretty interesting. I just love this airplane. And I love the PMDG airplane. What a uh, magnificent piece of software. You could definitely prepare for your recurrent training using this thing. Here. Yep. Let's take a look in the cockpit. And I wish I looked that good. Wish I looked that good. Yeah. How you doing, guys? Careful over those mountains. Got a bad feeling about this one today. Anyway, stop, stop being foolish. Um, all right, so we got the lights out. Altimeters will go standard. We should have done that earlier. Standard, standard, standard. All right, back to the uh, grind here. Hang on a second. This is the depressurization profile. So normally you, you depressurize, it's idle. You put the oxygen mask on, goggles on, establish commu crew communications, then you go. Flight level change down to 10,000, almost anywhere in the world. And it's idle, speed brakes, VMO, MMO, if the aircraft's not structurally damaged. Uh, and you hustle on down with speed brakes and as fast as you can get down to 10. Because a lot of times you fly an aircraft with just 12 minutes of oxygen. So you got to get those people down to a habitable altitude. Just putting the seatbelt sign on, make a PA, mayday, mayday, all that stuff. But you can't do that in Himalayas. 27,000 foot mile, mile mountains. So it's a 22 minute uh, oxygen capability on this, this 777, uh, 300 and 78, not on the 200, it's only 12. Escape altitudes. That's the initial altitude for any escape routing, which we'll talk about. Usually there's 17 if the train's over 10, but here they're 29. That's how high it is. We're going to descend down to 29 for 6 minutes, then 25 for 14 minutes. We get 22 minutes of oxygen. 6 plus 14 is 20. Then they expect us to get from 25 to 10 into the last 2 minutes before the people's oxygen runs out. That's to get out of the Himalayas, just to get to a safe 10,000-foot altitude. Um, hmm. Yeah, if it's clear, I'm going to probably cheat on that. And this 10,000, if that horn's going off, I'm going to go down to 9. And it's going to be pretty low to the ground, but will, the horn will go away. But you're going to have to endure these first 20-something minutes of the horn beeping unless that master warning works this time. Now, engine out drift down is different than depressurization. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Not quite as much of a hurry to get down. 
Um, these are the two three HL380 and 345. It's the Afghanistan shortcut. Those are the two depressurization circles that I'll show you. I'll get that all set up when you're gone. These are the routings I'm going to plan. This is the depressurization routing on HL380 that we're using today. This is engine out routing. It's a little different. These two are the same, though. Uh, some of the points are the same, but engine out, you can... Uh, well, let's take a look. What's our engine out altitude? Eighteen thousand. Uh, so eighteen thousand, and it'll take. It's going to take us about two hundred miles up to the, up a cruise. So at eighteen thousand, the terrain. Let me erase that before I do something stupid, right? Um, the terrain is going to be at seventeen five. So we'll cut across the mountains at 18,000. Not particularly comfortable, but we've got pressurization. That's engine out. But on depressurization, we have to get down to 10. Truth is, yeah, you know, passengers can survive at 14 or so for 30 minutes and not get even, not, not many of them get very sick. But that's always captain's discretion if you think you need it for terrain. But we're going to have that silly horn going off improperly, but going off nonetheless. Hang on a second. All right, so... Um, these are the two we'll be using. So this will be the depressurization route that we'll be taking. We're going to lose it right between Jerry and Ferris when we get there in about an hour 20. Um, Himalaya is going to be spectacular here. I, my, remember, we do this at night and in the weather sometimes, so you can't see them. But uh, today we'll get a good look at the Himalayas. Well, as good look as you can get on P3D. Um, we'll take it. This is the, the escape point at 29. It's my primitive drawing here. This is Afghanistan in here. We're going to cut across with Kabul. As we maintain 29 for 6 minutes, 25 for 14, descend down to 10. Now, on most escape routings, once you hit your point, whether it's at 19 or 17 or 21, once you're on that routing, you can descend down to 10. Not so much in Afghanistan. You got uh, in, well, in the Himalayas, you got to stay at 25 for a while. So it makes it different too. Usually, once you hit that point, you make your escape point altitude. You say, "Whew!" and go right down to 10, and the routing will take you down to. 10 no problem but we're going to go all around this train here like this into tashkent uzbekistan with its two 13,000 foot uh runways and reminiscent of the uh, soviet era the stands were uh, allies of the uh, soviets and they all russian runways all over here um now the engine out if you were to lose an engine in here uh, you come back along the route or go forward to Tashkent along the route because you can get down to 18 and these are 18,000, 17,000 foot mountains so you can go right in. Um, but right in here between Jerry and Furs a lot of time, you, you'll you drift down, you, you'll mountains will be too high in here, the 25. You'll have to actually fly the depressurization type route. Only difference is you cut across earlier because you can go down to 18, maintain 18, you can cut across a little earlier into Tashkent. But we're going down to 10, so we're going to have to go all the way around there. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of pausing after I'm done briefing this. This is the depressurization up route. Yeah, probably should have X'd out my airline. Uh, and how you set it up, we're going to set it up with 174-mile circles. And we'll show you about that. You'll, you'll, that'll come become clear later. These are our routings. We're going to use uh, 345 and 380. Uh, this is the routings on those. 345 goes into... VIAR, which is in India, and this uh, Tashkent is 380. That's the one we're going to use today. We're going to depressurize in there. So if you did it within 345, which is the first circle, you turn around and follow the depressurization routing right here back into uh, VIAR. That's Pun Punjab, Punjab, uh, and uh, Punjab, India. And if you lose it in 380, we're going to the Tashkent, Uzbekistan. See this escape altitude 29 is your initial altitude. And this is the routing, which I'll program in the secondary so you get a good visual pictation. We'll activate the secondary and fly that routing. Depressurization following the Himalayan profile descent. That's it. No fly zone over here. You'll see why when we get there. Gigantic mountains over our wings. I mean, the mountains are right there the whole time you're flying it. And this is the routing we'll fly <clears throat> into uh, Tashkent. All the way up there around this. Going down to 10. And that's it. And I wanted to explain a bunch of other stuff to the guys about the layover and stuff like that that you guys don't care about. But uh, anyway, I mean, that's enough for that. I get the nav graph ready to go. And come back in here. And I think, guys, 
for now, let's take a look at where we are. 27 for 30. We are, I'll get this up here, show you where we are before I put you on pause. All right. That's a 640 mile range. You can see right now we're going over Pakistan. We're talking to Lahore. Up here we're going to turn, and this is the depressurization area I was talking about. Uh, interesting thing is when we have Russian <clears throat> Russian overflight, which of course right now no one's overflying Russia, given everything that's taken happening in the uh, Crimea and Ukraine. We don't make that left-hand turn over towards Turkey here. We go straight ahead and fly over the polar region. It takes an hour 20 off the flight from New Delhi to Kennedy. But we can't go over Russia, so we're going to come up all the way around the Himalayan corridor and hang a hard left, go over the stands, Turkmenistan, Dushanbe, uh, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Baku, Turkey, up that way, 90-degree left turn up here to avoid Russian airspace. But here's where we're going to do our action. If you take a look, you are not going to fly this with me. Uh, I'll go to, uh, it's going to all be happening right about Jerry, right here, Matmo. Um, 0002Z, and we're at, um, I'm 0802Z, so you can see we're at 704. So that's about an hour from now, we'll come back on it. I'll come back on a couple of times to show you the, the scenes out the window as the Himalayas come into view. Here we are, 29 for 30. Um, but that's it for now. I can uh, show you a lot when I come back. I'll get everything set up for you. Okay, uh, go get another cup of coffee. Maybe I'll walk the dog. I got some mulch to spread. But I'll be back in an hour. All right, guys. Well, I'm just going to... Got a long way to go. Just showing. You. Here's the Himalayas starting to come into view. We're still over Pakistan. Mount Everest is way over one of one of these areas. Mount Everest way over there. We're not going to come anywhere near that. That's 29,000. Our our highest altitude, uh, the Himalayan corridor is 27. But you're starting to see them coming to view. It's Afghanistan over there. Pakistan, India's behind us. Um, obviously, we lost an engine. We just turned around and go back to India right now. Long way to go before I have to come back and uh, brief you on the depressurization. Once again, putting you on pause. Now, I can tell you, uh, I'd like to show you this terrain feature. Terrain. I've got this on 640 mile range. So within 640 miles, the highest terrain is 26,000 feet. The average terrain below us is 13.5. So right now, the average terrain below us is 13.5, and the highest terrain within that 640 is 25.8. If I decrease the range down to 320, let it calculate. Highest terrain is 27,000 feet. Average train is 13.5. If I come all the way down to, let's say, 40 or 20, we'll be using this a lot as we make our way into Tashkent. Uh, the train's only at eight, the highest train's at 8,000 feet within 20 miles. And the average train is about there, too. Uh, take it out a little. Anyway, we're going to use that a lot, especially since we're going to have that ridiculous cabin altitude warning going off. So that's the highest train is within um, 40 miles is 800 feet. And uh, 600 is the average. And we're going to use a lot if we're going to be trying to stay down around 9 to keep that horn off. Uh, truth is, you know, we we might have to climb up and down to get the horn to go on, stop going on and off. And maybe we're going to get lucky in this master warning switch. We'll do what it's supposed to do and silence the cabin altitude. The way I'm going to fail it, you should know, menu, uh, PMDG setup. Aircraft, failures, which one is it here? I think it's pressurization, pneumatic, program, uh, so that's not it. Let's go back here, program, it's good we're figuring this out now, huh? Failures, 
How about air conditioning program? Rapid decompression. I would put that under pressurization myself instead of air conditioning, but it's under rapid decompression. And as soon as we hit that, we're going to have a hole in the fuselage and uh, they're going to get the cabin warning and we're going to start our Himalayan descent. Now, normally that'd be what? Idle speed brakes, mask, oh, first of all, mask on, goggles on, established communications, idle speed brakes, VMO, MMO, uh, descent, get down as fast as possible. Got the spaghetti jungle back there. That's when the masks are all hanging down with 300 people. Um, a lot of panic in the back. It's going to get real cold. Probably a burst of fog back there. Cockpit, the reason you put your goggles on, debris could be flying around. Um, it's real noisy. What if the windshield blew out and that's what caused it? <clears throat> anyway, um, it's going to be a lot more violent than it's, we're going to see here today. I want to show you these two circles I built, just to give you the initial briefing on that. These are our depressurization points. This is called HL345. HL380. Those are our escape points. Once we enter this circle, we're in HL345 and our escape routing, I, mean, I don't have it listed because we're not going to do it there, but we would have VIAR, which is Punjab, um, in there. And Punjab, we'd have a blue routing. But what I did build in Route 2 is for uh, HL380 when we're in that circle um, is I did build the escape routing into Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and we'll fly the Himalayan descent. If you remember what it was, it's 29,000 for six minutes, then 25,000 for 14. That gives you two minutes left, and you got to go from 25,000 down to 10 in two minutes, so 15,000 feet, 7,500 feet per minute. I don't think so. So I'm probably going to use a cheat on that a little bit. And also, we got to get the clock started over here. As soon as we uh, depressurize, because we get 22 minutes of oxygen for the folks back there. Yeah, um, you can live at 14,000 feet for 30 minutes without much effect, especially if you're just sitting there. But there are people in very poor health back there that would have, have a lot of struggles. We think of them. So here's our routing. Remember, uh, we're going to go up here and hang a right. This is where we're going to lose our pressurization in the Himalayan corridor. Uh, we'll hang a hard left if we're not going to make it there. If we're going over Russia, we go straight ahead and save an hour 20. Not so much these days. We're going to, in a normal situation, go left and fly over the stands in Turkey, up into Romania, Bulgaria, and through Western Europe. Anyway, I thought you'd do that. Let's take a look outside see if we can see anything. All right, well, not so much yet. You can start to see the Himalayas come into view way out there. Eh, not so much. When we get there, it's going to be pretty spectacular. All right, guys. I'll be back. Hey, there's a funny view here. I'll show you it. Hold on a second. That's from underneath. If you pull way back. Under the ground, right? I love that view. At some point, you actually end up... Uh, let me go back. Down with the... Uh, the cars and stuff but um okay we'll come back to that looking good pmdg yes i know i should get some liveries i'm having trouble getting the liveries off the uh pmdg website all right we're at 30,000 feet how far till jerry you guys don't really care because you're not gonna you're gonna be on pause that's route two legs route one legs jerry route data 8.02, and we're 7.20, so 42 minutes. Um, all right. Any questions? All right, good. You must all understand it. See you. Okay, back for a little while. You can see the uh, Himalayas definitely coming into view. This would be Afghanistan over here. This is the no-fly zone. We're gonna about to make our turn. Right here, we're going around Pakistan, and we're going to, this will be Afghanistan over here, this is the Himalayan corridor, this is the no-fly zone, our train within 320 miles is 
24-6 max, 12-5 average, 160 miles, 20.2, and 10,000 average, and with the 80 miles, highest train is only 9,000, so you can see definitely in here, we could turn around and go right back, I could go all the way back to New Delhi, uh, no problem. Again, now I want to show you what, another thing that you'll find interesting. Got a ways to go here. B nav, engine out. Right now, if we lost an engine, we could drift down to 18.3. It would take us 215 miles to get down to 18.3 at an engine out speed of 292. We're not doing the engine out profile today. But what you would do is, you just on the good engine, you would set continuous power. Let me erase that engine index thrust you'd set continuous power on the good engine click that get your n1 set that and the aircraft would naturally start a drift down um, you could put whatever that was 18.3 in the window but it's going to drift down it's going to try to maintain the altitude at continuous power it'll slowly drift down it'll take us 215 miles um, if you take a look out Again, we're talking about uh, drift down versus depressurization. On our flight plan, I just know from experience, anything prior to Jerry here, you would turn around and go back to Punjab or you go back to Delhi. Anything after Farooz plus 70, you go on to Tashkent, leveling off at 18 with the mountains at 17.4, you go straight into Tashkent. But between Jerry plus 7 and Fruz plus 70 in here, you'd have to do the, uh, they, they give you a routing because you you don't have enough, you'd hit the mountains here, couldn't go back this way, so you'd actually have to fly pretty much what that depressurization routing is going to be in the secondary. Maybe I can show you that while we're here, we got some time, right? Uh, can I see it? It's there. It's built up in here. It's hard to see with the. Uh... Yeah, it's up in here. Too early to see. But anyway, we're about to make our turn. Just thought you might want to see the Himalayas coming up. They're going to get pretty big, pretty spectacular, pretty soon. And there'll be no doubt in your mind why that's a no fly zone and why there's very specific routing. We're right. We're only going to be about, you know, probably about 3,000 feet above the mountains. It's uh, it's interesting, and on the descent <coughs> down to 10, you'll see. I, I really hope that um, master warning switch. That's so pretty. Not good seats. It's the Himalayas. Like I said, usually we're at night. You can't see this night in the weather. Sometimes you end up up in Ga Afghanistan's airspace trying to get around weather. It's a challenging flight. It really is. As far as airline flights go get the setup for our next thing all right already this video is um 33 minutes long so um i'm gonna pause this and i'll come back on when we're up near the corridor i just can't help myself um let's see so we're in the 345 circle normally that would say hl 345 that's say hl 380 they're not in the database so they, these are the equivalent points so right here we're in this circle depressurization circle so we would divert into punjab uh, Right-hand turn, intercept the route, cross that first point at flight level 290, and then descend on down using the Himalayan profile descent. Six minutes of 29, fifth, 14 minutes of 25, and then down to 10. Uh, but when we get up into 380, we'll plan on going to Tashkent, Uzbekistan, up here, using this route that goes around this way. We'll look, take a look at that as we get going. Um, Anyway, I forgot to mention these circles right now. Our highest train is 25. Our average train below us is 12.9. Uh, anyway, you know, you know, this situational awareness with the circles, and normally these are 80-mile circles up for depressurization corridors. Pilots are constantly on routes like this using the fixed page to make circles around airports that are adequate or better or emergency if we need to. Um, so we're constantly, if we're doing our job, although may never need it in our entire career, 
You can go LNAV, VNAV, and uh, the airplane probably is going to get there, not talking to anyone. But you, where would you go if you had a medical emergency? Where would you go if you had an engine failure? Where would you go if you had a depressurization? Those are all very different because depressurization, you've got to come down now. Engine failure, you're, you're coming down slowly, but you're diverting. Medical, uh, you're really going to divert 310 people into a small airfield where they can't get hotels or can't get off the airplane or there's no medical facilities. You'll end up with a lot more medical issues then. So you're really going to be always thinking where you're going. Now, up in Western Europe, of course, it's not a big deal because there's so many facilities that can handle a 777 and hospitals and uh, hotels and things like that. But down in this part of the world, oh, by the way, Pakistan does not want us. They've made that very clear. So that you do not want to divert into Pakistan with a plane full of people from India. They're not uh, particularly friendly. You can, and I, I'm sure they'd be fine, but there's actually bulletins out that they would prefer you to not come to into Pakistan. But, you know, uh, one thing you never think about, you put this airplane down, they may not have the stairs to get the people off the airplane. They may, they may not be suited for that. So now you've got 300 people trapped on an airplane. You know, it's a lot, lot of things to think about. We also have the ability to, uh, you know, we're making our turn towards the Himalayas. Isn't that pretty? Uh, starting to see how it looks. This is the area that's most critical that we'll make our decision in. Uh, 27,000 foot mountains. And here, and we'll be uh, diverting. But right now, we'd be going back, right? Engine out or depressurization. Anyway, okay, again, we were already at uh, 37 minutes. We haven't even started our depressurization yet. It's just going to be a long video. Hope you guys are okay with that. Hey, want to see something fun? Watch this. We're going into Pakistan. Ah, here we are. Got flying cars around here. Cars flying along the road. It's the Himalayas up here. Go back to our airplane. Here we are. I just love this stuff. God, I'm becoming a bigger nerd every day. All right, getting close to uh, sabotaging ourselves over the Himalayas. Find another one of those... Uh, Things see what's below us. Any flying cars? Oh, we're actually over an airport. Look at that. In Pakistan. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. There we are. So, let's get this range down a little bit. You can see we're still in the 345 circle. That's a 380 circle. We would still, if we lost an engine, go backwards. If we had a depressurization, we'd use the 345 escape point at flight level 290, flying the Himalayan descent profile, 6 minutes of 29, 14 minutes of 25, then down to 10 to stay within 22. Don't let me forget to start the clock over here for the 22 minutes. I know you guys won't. Um, anyway. Yeah, this Jerry Faruz right in here engine out you can't go forward you can't go back you actually have to go towards the depressurization corridor and there's a routing for engine out it's pretty much the same except that you can turn towards Tashkent early because you can maintain over uh, 18,000 feet which is above the 17,400 foot mountains uh, at depressurization we have to go much wider than that because you need to get all the way down to 10 all right guys I hope that works. Otherwise, you're going to be muting me for the entire depressurization event. Nothing I can do. So I have to fly the Himalayan profile in the descent, and then I'll be able to uh, get below 10, and I'll try to squeak us down to 9 and maybe get that cabin altitude warning to go off. If you have me muted during that period, you'll know when the cabin red cabin altitude warning goes out <clears throat> that we're no longer above 10 that the horn is not going off. So, one more look at the Himalayas. What do you think? Right? 
Oh, um, Mount Everest, one of these two. One of you guys can tell me. I think it's that one. I think that's Mount Everest, 29,000 feet. Not sure about that. This is Nepal over there. Pakistan, Nepal. China's out that way. No fly zone up here. Just couldn't get out. Over here is Afghanistan. And up in here somewhere is where we're going to lose pressurization and start our divert. All right. Let me take another look inside. And uh, go down here. Jerry. What's this? 04. Yeah, we got about another uh, seven or eight minutes before we depressurize. So. I'm going to pause it again because, as I mentioned, we are already at uh, 41 minutes. So uh, do everything we can to keep this shorter. All right. So here we are over the Himalayas. You can see. I just wanted to give you a perspective here. If we lost an engine. We're supposed to go back and drift down that way. 215 miles. Get on the other side of this ridge to get down to 18. And there's no going back on that. You can't get any can't get any higher. Uh, so we still would be going back along our road of flight. But we're rapidly entering a period where we wouldn't have enough room to do a drift down engine out. I'm talking about drift down, not explosive depressurization. Um, let's take a look up here. Yeah, we're getting into the area where you can't go back, can't go front. So you actually would have to follow the engine out drift down route over towards pretty much the depressurization route. So we're getting close. You can see not very high above the mountains. What is the highest train here? It's probably like a 258. Let's take a look. Uh, 24.4. All right, now we're turning up towards Jerry. You can see that we're leaving the 345 circle. We're entering the 380 circle, HL 380, which is a Tashkent divert. Right now we're in no man's land. We could use either one. Um, but I would tend to go out towards Afghanistan on our depressurization route for Route 2. Why don't we get started? So in here is where you're in the engine out drift down issue where you can't go back, can't go forward. You'd have to fly over here, engine out. Explosive depressurization, um, we could go either one because we're in both circles, but I would tend to go out towards Afghanistan where I knew the train was a little, little bit lower. So let's do our magic. You guys ready? Here we go. Why am I nervous? Why am I nervous? PMG setup, aircraft. Failures. We decided it was air conditioned, right? Air conditioned. And let's hope that master warning works. Programmed. All right. Look up in here. Let me get you where you can see that. Here we go. Ready? Passenger auctions on cabin altitude. Cabin altitude is 28,000 feet. We get uh, max mass on. Now this better work. Oh man, that is so disappointing. I wonder if I could turn down the gain volume. You know, I could probably leave. Uh... Yeah, I, I think I know how to get around this. All right, so masks are on. If there's debris flying around, we'd put our goggles on, establish communications between the two of us. we got to go over towards our uh, our point. So we're going to go to root, legs, legs, root two legs, activate, execute, Kylob, execute, LNAV, and here we go towards Kylob. And we're supposed to go down to 29, right? So 
the 29, 321. All right, and I would call for my aircraft checklist. We go up here, we get the seatbelt sign on. We would turn all our lights on. And one of us is on the radio saying Lahore, and we do it on guard, and we do it on the frequency the head is on. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Hurricane 293 has had explosive depressurization. We're proceeding direct to HL. 380 for divert to Tashkent. And they come back on. They would not be happy, but that's what we're doing. So, yeah, this is supposed to silence it, guys. It's not going to do it. So I think the way we're going to work around it is do this. I'll just keep the uh, OBS, which is the recording software, on for the moment, okay? I have to go back and forth on it. Let me move it over here. Woohoo! Can I go any further? I'd like to get it way over here. Yeah, I think that's the way we're going to have to work around it. So normally that button would uh, do it. So here we are. Oh, what did I forget to do? You guys are supposed to tell me. So let's we'll say 8.05 is when it started, okay? So six minutes would be 8.11. And then we we'll go down to 25. Now remember, let me go to OBS here. Ah. That's better. That's how we're going to get around this um, until we can get down to 9,000. So I'm glad I figured that out. I that, that helps a lot. Hold on, I got to do something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yep. So remember, the Kylob, the escape altitude is 29. On every other escape altitude and around the world. Once you establish on a route, which is right here, our escape route, which we had programmed, you would um, be able to go right down to 10. But in the Himalayas, we could do 6 minutes to 29, 14 minutes to 25, then hustle down to 10. Now, the other thing, I hate to do it to you, I'm going to move over here, is we got to run the checklist. 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 All right, don the oxygen mask, establish communications, did that. Check the cabin altitude rate, we did that. Cabin altitude is uncontrollable, yes. Cash the oxygen pressed and hold for one second. Well, the masks have already deployed. I'm going to try pushing this with different fingers. Uh, right now we have a spaghetti jungle back there. Let me try pushing the master warning with all different things. The mouse button, maybe the enter key. No, cancel, check. All right, no luck. Okay, so we'll have to do some. Uh, without delay, descend to the lowest safe altitude or 10,000. Okay, and checklist. Move the thrust levers to idle. Uh, remember, this is the descent. Uh, we go idle, speed brakes, DMO, MMO, which is top air indicated airspeed, top mock, and, and uh, make the PA, seatbelt sign on, all that stuff. All right, that's done. Cabin altitude checklist should have been complete. Hold on one second. I'll get rid of it in a second, guys. I'll get rid of it in a second. Stay with me. For whatever reason... All right, why isn't it going away? Move the threat slide, idle. Let's do this, let's item checklist override. Okay, cabin altitude checklist is complete. All right, we'll go here. I'll get rid of the, uh, I'll go back to OBS studio. Right now we're at three minutes, four minutes, because we said, oh, what do we use, 05? Yeah, so. All right, and Clear that. Clear that. The one message you can't clear is cabin altitude. Yeah, it's disappointing this doesn't work. I'll have to send PMDG a message. They really, uh, they're so good that you think they fixed that. Okay, let's go back to studio. Ah. Okay, so other than going back and forth to studio, the way we're going to have to do this is um, below, get down around 9,000 instead of 10. 
which wouldn't be a problem normally, except the terrain down there is like 9200, so we're going to have to be playing with it. So between using the OBS Studio prompt to silence it and uh, going down to 9 should work out. So our route's going to take us around. So you can see the train here. Going to take us all the way around this train. Engine out, drift down. You'd be drifting down very slowly with continuous power set on the good engine. Probably be about 200 feet a minute. 200, probably more than that. At whatever speed is in there. I think it was 290 uh, on this airspeed. And you go across. Now we're diverting, right? Another good thing to do. What's our time to en route? We're going to land at Tashkent at 16 in about a little over an hour. I would start dumping fuel because it only dumps at 5,000 pounds a minute. So we'll arm it. There we go. And what happens here, let me go to OBS while I talk about this. You can see here, it's going to dump us down to max landing weight. It's going to bring us down to 100,000 pounds. So we're at 281,000 pounds. So we've got an hour to go at 5,000 pounds a minute. So it's going to dump 180 pounds. So it's going to take 180,000 pounds. It's public math. Right, so that's 60,000, five times 60 is 300 pounds. Yeah, we should get down to max landing weight, which is great. So uh, we're dumping fuel. Normally when dumping fuel, you want to wait till you're about six or 7,000 feet above the ground, so you're not dumping toxic fuel onto crops and people, um, where, of course, the fuel would greatly dissipate between now and then. But we do the May Day. We're coordinating. We're over Afghanistan right now, and we're going in. We're going to end up in Tajikistan and... Uh, Oh, up to Uzbekistan and all that stuff. They'll be changing controllers. I right, gotta slew the camera around. It's gonna get noisy. So here we are. We're at 29. Might be getting close to our. Uh... Yeah, there's our six minutes. So now we gotta go down to 25. But um, our max terrain is 23 within 320, so I'm comfortable going down to 25. So I'm gonna dial in 25. The flight level change it. 25, here we go. Ah. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that the first time I filmed this, of going to OBS Studios, but what happened was I was turning my headset volume down, hoping against hope that perhaps um, you couldn't hear the horn with the headset volume down, but when I played it back, it was awful. So you guys would have tuned out in the first 15 minutes if you aren't going to do it now. Right now, we're already at 53 minutes. We'll be landing at Tashkent. I won't be able to keep you on the whole time. It'll be a two-hour two, two hour and 20-minute video, a two-hour video, but um, I'll get down to 10 before I uh, take tune you out, pause you, but I'll come back on if that 9,000 feet starts getting crazy so you can see that. But anyway, so now, if you remember, 05, I started a minute late. Um, so we're at 8 minutes. We're supposed to go to 25 for 14 minutes, a so total of 20. So when this gets to uh, 19, or this gets yeah, 11, uh, 24, we'll uh, des start a descent down to 10. Now, we have a benefit here, though. We have the ability to look at our terrain here. So right now, we're way out there. We're 320 miles, and we know the highest train is 23, and it's over here. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Now, at 20 minutes total, we're supposed to go from 25 down to 10 using the Himalayan profile, and you can't do it. So um, those masks will start, the oxygen will stop flowing back there. So right now, the people are very cold. There's probably debris that's flown around back there from whatever catastrophic thing happened and depressurizes. Yeah, the... Um, 777, like most transport category aircrafts, if it starts losing pressurization, the outflow valves close automatically. So if, you, if it loses pressurization like that, there's something catastrophic that occurred, whether it's a cockpit window, uh, I hate to say it, an explosion in the in the belly, something caused, uh, I don't 
wonder why it's leveling off. There it goes. Something caused the rapid loss of pressurization. But we did the checklist. There's also some other checklists here. Um, we call them, hold on, how am I doing here? Yeah, we're good. Um, and we're about to hit our depressurization escape point. That's called escape point. In most parts of the world, you can be cleared down to 10 after that. But here, you're going to maintain at 25 because you're way above it. So once you hit Kylob, which is HL380, you'd be able to descend right down to 10 in more, most places. Not so much here. You're going to use your Himalayan profile, keep an eye on the terrain. Um, but anyway, that's interesting. At least I think so. I find a lot of stuff like this interesting. I'm going to put the noise back on. We got a non-normal checklist, unannunciated. So we got all sorts of things here that are unannunciated, unannunciated checklist, overweight landing, uh, chart landing chart. We get landing distance. We got a lot of time to do that. But that's one of the checklists that we'd run. We'd be uh, let me go back over here and do this. We'd be contacting dispatch, uh, making our PAs outside the airplane, talking to the flight attendants. Contacting dispatch, we could do through the A cars, tell them we've had an explosive depressurization, and we're uh, executing the HL380 escape routing to Tashkent. Estimated Tashkent landing time, 0916 Zulu. So that's one hour from now, guys. So. Uh, and this is the route. And by the way, no shortcuts. So you're going to be looking out here and it's clear in a million. And you get here and you go, oh, shoot, I can go direct Tashkent. And don't do it. These are 16 or 17,000 feet mountains. You've got to fly this route. When you look at the um, grid mores, which are the different grids, they're up around 93, 9,400 feet. Uh, remember, we're going to be playing the game trying to get that out. But now that I've figured out that I just have to activate the um, OBS studio, and it can quiet it, yeah, that's, this is doable. This is definitely doable. Let's take a look outside. And where are we on the time? We're at 12 minutes. It says 11. We started a minute late, so 12 minutes. We can go all the way to 20 at 25, right? But we're going to get down a little before that. And right now our min terrain is at uh, 21, and that's 320 miles out. So, uh, you know, I really could go down to 23 here and feel pretty comfortable because I get that range way out to cover our whole route. Right, if I had the range way in here, here comes a viper. Well, not so much, right? It's saying 16. Yeah, but I don't have it covering my whole route. So, um, you know, it's the Himalayan profile says 25,000 for 14 minutes and then dive down those last two minutes before their oxygen runs out to 10 at 7,000 feet per minute. Yeah, we're not going to do that. So we're going to use what we have here. And our train is 8,100 8, feet. Our max train is 16. And we're going to start over Kylob, start tweaking it on down using our train indicators. Oh, we have studios. Ah, let's look outside. Yeah, so we're going to go up here and we're going to hang a left to go all the way around this terrain up here before we make our way into Tashkent. Now, if we were engine out, we'd be following a very similar route, except we'd be drifting down to our engine out altitude, which is probably around, I don't know, 18.5 now. Um, and then we could cut across, because these mountains are only 17.4. We could cut across them at 18.5. I don't know. I, I might just take the whole depressurization route, and even engine out. Um, that's a little bit tight for me. Why push it, right? Just why push it? Gonna remember to watch the fuel. Let's see how the fuel dump's going. Here goes nothing. Well, there it is. Um, can you guys see it? OBS Studio. Okay, so right now we are down to 235.5. It's coming out at 5,000 pounds a minute. Yeah, so it's like 2,700 kilograms a minute. Um, our cabin altitude is at 25,000 because our airplane's at 25,000. And it's come down nicely. Yep, so I think we'll pretty much be at max landing weight, so we won't have to do an overweight landing. So the airplane's obviously going to be grounded in Tashkent, 
Um, are there ho enough hotels? Are there enough medical facilities if we need them? Uh, can they get the people off the airplane? Yes, they can get the people off the airplane. They, they equip for a triple seven. They have customs. They have medical. Um, they do have hotel rooms. Have enough for 300 people. We'll see, hopefully. Um, but the maintenance is going to be significant. It's going to be, um, you know, the explosive depressurization, probably a hole in the hull, which is going to ground this thing for quite a while. But if you did an overweight landing on top of it, uh, you know, that's just one more specialty that we're going to have to do. Uh, one more special thing. So I'm going to try not to do an overweight landing. Not to mention, you do a heavyweight landing and you heat those brakes up, uh, landing at 760,000 pounds. And you're going to hurt some people out there, not to mention your tires might blow. So whenever you can avoid doing a max overweight landing, that's great. So it's good that we're fuel dumping. All right, we are now two miles from being on the depressurization route. We're on it. We are on it right about now. So yeah, in the, in the most depressurization corridors, we'd be cleared down to 10. Here we got to ride out some of our time. Right now we are. Oh, we're at 15 minutes, so we got to get to 20. But I'm feeling pretty comfortable, guys. I'm gonna put this out a little further. And it says the highest terrain within 320 miles is 15,000. So I'm gonna go down, start my descent. I'm gonna go down to 8, 7, 15. Uh, as eight, I'm sorry, how about 19? And this is not in the... Oh, oh there's the approach in the Tashkent. That was my next thing to talk about. So here we go. Um, I'm going down to 19 because the tra highest train anywhere around here, which is probably right over here, is 17. So I'm comfortable. And I know I can't make it. do not want them sucking on nothing out of the masks. Uh, should we uh, knock it down to 10,000? It used to be when we were, when I was just a baby in the airline, if you lost pressurization, they said you could go 14,000 feet on the divert. And uh, if they refiled you from takeoff, depressurized, you had to go at 10. But uh, so I know at 14,000, I was reading up on it for this presentation, you can last 30 minutes uh, with, before anyone gets really any significant effects. Uh, people in decent health aren't going to really notice much of anything. They're not moving around. But uh, other people may start notice a shortness of breath. Maybe some of their signs of hypoxia though, will be pretty low. Here we are. Let's go down here see if we can see any moving cars. Oh. Nah. Nothing. That's a childlike move by, by me. Um, okay, so there's people in these seats with their masks on, enjoying the flight, and ringing their bell, asking if they could get a Coke. Remember, the spaghetti straps are all hanging down, all the masks. People are terrified, and they're cold, and they're scared, and the flight attendants really have their hands full back there. So communication, reassuring them that we'll be landing in Uzbekistan in about 50 minutes. We'll make travel plans for them there. Sorry for the inconvenience. Be as calm as possible. Don't tell me you can't hear anything because the cabin altitude warning won't turn off. All right, I'm keeping an eye on this train here. So it's saying it's within 320 miles, 16. So I'm, I'm comfortable with 19. And where are we on our time? That's 18 minutes. We have four minutes to get down to 10. And from uh, 18 down to 10, that's still 4,000 feet per minute, right? So I'll squeeze it on down a little if I can. Now we can go, see how everything's within 160 miles? We'll go to 160 mile range here. OBS Studio. And we're down. That yeah, train is... Uh, 18 too, so 19 is as low as I want to go. Although I know that's over here. That was funny. I went from uh, oh, I'm so happy I figured out a way to uh, silence that. So maybe I won't have to go down to nine because that does make me a little nervous. The train is right there. 
can see that the train, average train right now is at 8, so it'll be awful tight down there. Fuel dump. Got about another 100,000 pounds to go. All right. Yeah, I woke up this morning and I, I thought I'm not going to post this video that I made yesterday, which you can see takes a long time. Um, with that, with that noise going off, it's just it's just crazy. So I came up with the plan of going down. If that master warning didn't work, um, I, as it didn't the first time, I would go down to uh, 9,000 and try to play that game. But now that I have this OBS studio, I think I'll hang out at 10 because the min sector in those areas is like 9,200 feet. All right, so right now we're at 20 minutes. We have two minutes to get down. I'm going to put in 10. Start is on down. And, and go to OBS Studio like the manual says. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. You can see this little airfield down here. It's uh, like a 7,000 foot runway. Why wouldn't you go in there? Uh, well, if you were on fire, uh, you got a cargo fire and this explosion actually was a bomb and for some reason you were on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you go in here and put it down, but it has no medical facilities. They can't get the people off the airplane. They can't fuel the jet for sure. Not that you'd worry about that. Um, there's a lot of reasons you wouldn't go in there. Uh, if the people are stuck on the airplane, you got some serious problems getting them on and off. So Tashkent, we know, is an improved alternate, emergency alternate, has all the facilities, medical, 777 refueling, stairs. Like, imagine if you couldn't get fuel on the airplane, and uh, the company would never get the plane out of there. They'd have to truck in fuel. So it's a lot of reasons. But the most, the primary thing you're looking for, of course, that no everyone else goes above all, is medical and people. What's the safest course of action? And certainly going in there with your hair on fire with no ILS and short runway is not one of them. If you're on fire, uh, yeah, but not in this case where you just don't have pressurization. Um, not a big deal. Now it isn't. Hello. I'll go down. Let's go down. Let's do another little weird thing. See who's down here. Nothing. I was kind of hoping to see some flying cars. All right. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson's seat. Never did get their Coke. Okay, so here we are. It says standard altimeters. We're just going to keep 2992 the whole time. And we're going to go back here. We're leveling off at 10,000. Our, you can see that our terrain is 17.2, a 7.2. So 10,000 should look good. Imagine if you're doing this at night and the weather going down. So here we are. We just hit 22 minutes. We're at 15,000. So, you know, it's very habitable back there. Their oxygen is just starting to run out now. So since we lost pressurization, it's 22 minutes. I'm going to keep this going to show you how long it took when we finally get to Tashkent from the time we depressurized to the time we landed. Fuel dump. About a 90,000 pounds to go. Normal checklist, descent, recall, notes, auto brakes. Got a long way to go, but we'll start talking about that. Landing data we'll do, approach brief we'll do. Altimeters we're never going to touch, guys. I used to arm the spoilers by accident. All right. Let me come back in here. All right, so here we are, getting down to 10. The train right below us is 11, so um, I don't know. Let's do this. Let's level off at 12, guys. Actually, level off right here. Altitude hold. Keeping an eye on this, right? 
The people will be just fine at 12.5. Just fine. Take a look outside. Hairy, huh? So, yeah, they, the procedures are to go all the way down to 10, but, you know, 11.5, see, that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of piloting stuff that would have to go on in here. The rope procedures in the weather at night, if you're trusting it, you could end up in a world of hurt. important thing is don't take any shortcuts. Use your terrain button down there. I'm not sure we have 10,000 feet down, uh, below us, so I'm not sure about that. I think Tashkent is up in this area, guys. So we're going to make a right-hand turn, fly over. And once we get in this valley, the terrain goes down significantly. But you can see my plan of going down to 9 would not have worked, would it? To just to get the horn to go off. So I'm so happy I discovered that OBS Studio. Let's take a look at Tashkent approach. Um, the ILS-8 right, let's take a look at the runways. Two Soviet-era runways, they were all part of the USSR runway system, 13,000 feet of cron concrete runway. There's two of them, which is great. Um, they are 200 feet wide, so they're wide, so tendency would be to flare a little high, right, because you think you're lower. Instead of 150 feet, 200 foot wide runway, that's pretty standard. Um, we've got hurls, high intensity runway lighting. Where are we? Hurls, pappies on the left, three degree pappies, pretty standard. We'll land on the outside runway and uh, stop straight ahead and they can look us over and we'll get our progressive. Well, what I'll probably do though is stop and then we'll terminate the video. It's getting long enough. So we know it's got the runway. Uh, let's take a look at the approach. It's uh, ILS 8 right. We'll check the frequencies on the late. I don't want to listen to the beeper. 1117076 category D. The 300 is a category D. 200 is a category C. 1570 is going to go there. Pappies, Hausers, Mausers. And a missed approach would be to climb to 2100 right to NDB. So right in our section that we're coming in from, 3,500 feet. But you get up here, 11,000, 5,000. So our safest course of action will be a southwesterly heading. Let's take a look outside here because it's getting interesting out there. Woohoo. Yeah. Not very far up above the uh, mountains, are we? So now it says 10.6 within 80 miles. I'm happy here at 12. People are not going to suffocate at 12,000 feet pressure altitude, guys. Um, by the way, cockpit. We have plenty of, uh, I'll get this set over here, plenty of oxygen for hours. If you were worried about me, I got mine, right? All right, I'm comfortable now going down to 11 because the terrain, average terrain is at 10.6. And that's within our range. So I'm going to go to 11. Flight level, change it. Turn off the horn. Here we go. I hope you're enjoying this. If you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would help me a lot. It's part of my retirement plan, which starts in September, um, is to do a little of this, a little of that. I don't golf, so I stay busy other ways. I'm new to the flight sim world, new to YouTube. 36 years with a major airline, as I mentioned, retire in September because I turned 65. Looking forward to it. Believe me, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I don't want to be up all night anymore, and I don't want to uh, travel. I don't want to be away from home. I'm not going to do a flying job. There's plenty of them out there for old guys, but I'm not going to do that. We also have the added benefit, guys. If we did get a terrain, terrain pull up, we would go autopilot, auto throttles off, throttles full forward, check speed brakes retracted and rotate to 20 degrees pitch and uh, that's the escape maneuver for terrain. We do have a radio altimeter so if we got within 2500 feet that would activate so obviously we haven't had to happen. Now it's saying that our lowest our average terrain within what are we on 80 miles is 10,000 is 9500 so we know 11 is a good altitude. You know we go down to 10 like the book the profile said I don't know that's a little uncomfortable especially when taking compressibility factor for altimeters right yeah I hope you're enjoying this it's a long one and I'm going to turn on the horn I want to check the ILS freaks 1570 is in the window 111.7 76 that's close enough
OBS Studios. We should always have one in our airplane. So I have a lot of dad humor. You guys can be honest with me. My kids think so. so yeah, so I got six kids. Six kids. They're very, very successful people. I'm very proud of them all. Got uh, several grandchildren. They call me Bampy. I got a few videos posted flying with Bampy and Henry. They're ridiculous, but I made them for my grandson and my kids and convinced me to release them so that their kids could watch them rather than do it. I was inept at getting them private, so I apologize in advance for the flying with Bampy videos. They were ones I just made for my grandson, who will be three soon. He got a big kick out of it. I don't know how they'll do. I think they'll do nothing. I haven't even checked them in a long time. I enjoy doing the instructional content. It's where my strength is, obviously. I was doing it on all the different airplanes. Uh, 7.6, a couple of different 7.6 models, MD-11, A310, 737, um, the, and even the Phoenix uh, Air, Airbus. I studied them and I did them. But I was finding, as most of you know who have been following me, I was I, I was getting confused at work. And some of my airline pilot subscribers have told me they experienced the same thing. So I made a commitment that until I retire, I would only fly a PMDG uh, 777, and it has worked out well. I feel very comfortable going to work. As a matter of fact, it's great preparation for my final recurrent training in May. Uh, it's been great preparation, some of the things I've been doing. So I'm enjoying it. But I'll go back to flying all that other stuff um, and instructing some of their other things when they come back. But this PMDG 777 is supposed to be making its way over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, where the optics are a little better and there's more people. I'm, right now I'm flying it on Prepare 3D, which is fine platform, and uh, doing a lot of that sim now. I'm trying to do that. I get afraid when I go on there. I, I'm not afraid to talk to the real Heathrow directors, but I'm afraid to talk to the Manchester Ground Control. Um, but I'll tell you, very impressed with the VAT sim community. Let me get some data showing here. All right, so now we're at 11. I'm going to go all the way out, right? All the way out. And I'm going to see what the average terrain is. All right, it's 9. So I'm going to go down to 10. 10,000, here we go. OBS, I would love to get down to 9 just so I could turn that horn off. But we're going around the last of the terrain here. You can see it's out there. Yeah. So the tendency is to look off your right wing and take a shortcut. You end up in a world of hurt. Uh, the terrain rises to meet you. So here we are. The highest terrain is 13.6, and that's way over here. The average terrain is 8.8, so I'm going down to 10 so that the weakest passengers back there, the ones with the most difficulty, health issues, can possibly breathe better. As we get into the plains and we make our turns over at Induck and head up into the valley that leads into Tashkent, the train drops down to three, so we'll be able to get down to nine, and we can stop doing this nonsense with the uh, OBS Studios because the horn will be silenced. Uh, we, the yeah, horn will be silenced because we'll be down below nine. Yeah, I, w I actually thought, oh my God, do I not know how to silence the altitude horn? Is there a button somewhere? And there isn't. On the 777, it's strictly the master warning. It silences it. it won't make the message go away, but it will silence it only. Um, right away, and it's just not working. And I, so then I went into the PMDG, probably spent an hour and a half researching this, and looked for those push buttons. Like this is the uh, go round, right? They have it set for go round here. I don't know why it's not lighting up, but oh yeah, because I don't have the screen active. Go round, you press the middle key, that's uh, auto thr throttles, and the right key is auto thrust. So let me take a look. Toga, middle is auto throttles. Right as this. So they have those little secret switches. Another one is right here. If I did this, the EFIS panel comes right in front of me. It's kind of cool. So I did learn that, so there were some benefits um, of that. Now, I could go down to 9, but I'm going to stay at 10. And the reason I say I could go down to 9, I've got this all the way out to 80 miles, and I'm pretty confident the terrain is off to our right. take a look yeah 
That's quite the view, isn't it? Ah, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, about to turn here in 18 miles at Invor in a right-hand turn. So I think it's right up in here and up that valley. Yeah, so there's some airmanship involved here. You can't just blindly follow the depressurization route. You're really going to use your head uh, in your airmanship. And as I mentioned, this would be at night and a lot of times in the weather. So you're, you've got to rely on the equipment you have, the terrain. And, uh, you know, as a captain, I wouldn't hesitate to go up to 18,000 if I wouldn't know where the heck I was and get over those mountains. And the people may get a little hypoxic, may get some air sick, but no one's going to die. Um, everybody would start feeling probably some of the weaker people back there feeling tingling, but it beats the alternative, right, guys? We all know that, so... Um, little airmanship. In this case, I have all my equipment. It's VFBMC conditions, and I'm able to play this game. Those mountains look awful close. Ah, some palm trees. That's the little desert. There's a the Himalayas out there. Look at those mountains. Wow. All right, Captain, that's enough. Get us out of here. All right, so we're about to start our turn from Invor into Indud. Start flying up the valley. The terrain is up to 10-3. But the train below us averages around 8. So I'm happy with 10 right now. Remember, if I got a terrain warning, I just apply those procedures. Autopilot, auto throttles off, thrust full forward. Check speed brakes, retract, and rotate to 20 degrees and escape. Get the heck out of there. Wouldn't have to climb very high. And this thing, we got all sorts of smack here to do it. So in bore, we're going to turn. How are we doing on the fuel? You don't want to be dumping fuel on touchdown or on short final. So at some point in here, I will turn it off. How long till landing? 22. Ah, uh, we still got 40 minutes till landing. I don't know if I can keep you guys on uh, the line that that long. Maybe what I ought to do is pause this. Yeah, I'll pause it, and I'll pick it back up as we get a little closer. We're still 263 miles away. All right, I'm going to pause you guys. Look at this. It's right below us. Let's go up a little. Can't see the airplane because it's behind that hill. That's how high the train is. Yeah. But we're at uh, 10,000. We're about to make our turn down the valley, at which time the terrain's going to drop down to three, and we'll be able to descend on down. So we've briefed the approach. We've done a landing analysis for our weight, and our landing rolls around 6,800 feet for a dry runway. Uh, we're going to plan on stopping straight ahead, having them look us over what caused it. We still don't know what caused the explosive depressurization. Was there a bomb? Uh, was there some sort of a panel that blew off the aircraft? Um, which do we need to be towed in? We'll have the fire trucks, uh, ARF equipment, rescue and fire trucks. We call them safety vehicles to people. So we don't want to compound our problem by having people evacuate or the flight attendants evacuate when we land, getting nervous if they smell any kind of smoke or anything like that. So when we land, we will say, this is the captain, remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. It's been a long time since I talked to the flight attendants, so I'm periodically checking in, saying, how's it going back there, giving them our intended landing time, uh, what we plan on doing, just what I just told you. Um, we'd be talking to the company, probably have enough time now to go on SATCOM and uh, talk to them about things and uh, 
satellite voice. We can actually have a direct contact. We have four people, remember. So a lot of delegation taking place here. One of us is flying. One of the guys is watching the guy flying. The other two are working the problem. But we have uh, one of the highly qualified pilots making all the PAs, talking to the flight attendants, calling the company, talking to them. So the two guys up front can concentrate on flying the jet. Anyway, that's some basic stuff there. Pause for a little while. I'm going to just try descending down to 9. You can see the highest train is 8,400. And the train average below us is only 44. We're making a turn up to Tashkent Valley here. Just going to make sure these mountains aren't... Uh, and now it's saying the highest train is at 96, 10, 9. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll see about that. That's out at 80. We bring it into uh, 40. And guess what went out, guys? The cabin altitude light went out. Ah, thank the Lord. Although it was kind of nice flying in OBS Studios with it all quiet. Yes, we'll keep an eye on it. It's clearing a million. If it were IMC conditions right now, I probably would stay up at 10. But uh, I can see where I'm going. I'm in the valley, and I do know from doing it last time that it gets increasingly better. Let me go in here. Huh. Mr. Mrs. Johnson. Move this out a little bit. Yeah, see, that's out, going out 320 miles. The highest terrain is way up there. That's not that, but it's 7,000 average. So I'm happy with 9,000 right now. I know 250 below 10, but we're an emergency. Mayday aircraft. We're keeping the speed up to get this over with for these poor people. If you want to take a look at the approach, put it in plan, right? Bring the range way down. Then we'll come down here, walk through it. Let do is the IAF at or below five. We'll we'll end up setting it up in the LNAV, VNAV, so we intercept the final. I'll do that in a little while. So it's uh, and then a right hand turn to intercept the ILS at or below five. Let do at or below four at Abbas, and uh, that's it. So I'll be flying to LNAV, VNAV until we get on final and we'll do a nice uh, profile descent VNAV de descent, VNAV path descent time let's see 24 so we're still not landing for uh, over half an hour so in the interest of you're not going to miss much here other than my wonderful commentary um, you can see the trains dropped off at five miles see how it looks out at uh, 80 miles 7,000 so that's still good I'm not worried about this 14,000 that's obviously over here uh, alright so uh, I'll be back All right, something I did do is I was looking at the max landing weight, and that's 540, and uh, I wanted to get us down below that. So I took this from 100,000 down to 85, so we've got about another 11,000 pounds to go, about two more minutes. So it'll stop at 85, and we'll have to be well below our max landing weight. So we would have, had we not dumped, we would have been landing at 730,000 pounds and absolutely created a hot break situation. It's a warm, trop, uh, warm desert type environment down there. So um, definitely good idea to dump. Also, if you don't dump, you never get to flaps 30 because your, your weight's too high to go to flaps 30 because you have to be below 180 knots to do it so it's it's good we're able to do a flaps 30 landing breaks through let it roll out still 
we're, we're, we're heavy. We're not bad at all, though. We're below. We're not even going to do an overweight landing. So anyway, we've coordinated with dispatch. They probably already have arranged for the customs. The maintenance is probably already getting the parts together to fly out here. Um, what they know they'll need. Um, of course, they don't really know, do they? And uh, they usually fly them in like a Learjet. Somehow get them in. Or they bring the parts in on Uzbekistan Airlines. Whoever it might be. Let's see right now the terrain. Uh, high terrain is over here. That's 16,000, 7,000. But I'll stay at 9. I'm, I'm happy here. Now let me do the landing checklist, the approach checklist. Altimeters we're not going to set, guys. And that's that. I get that checklist ready to go. I'm going to do a recall up here. Passenger oxygen on. That's it. I don't know if I can turn that off. Uh, I guess it's just on. Yeah, there's no way to stow these spaghetti straps down there. If you went back there, it looks like a uh, spaghetti jungle. You know, it still looks pretty uh, interesting out here. Look how close we are to the ground. We obviously, that's the Tashkent Valley. I don't know what it's called, actually. Getting ready for our Tashkent layover. What do you guys want to do? Huh? Maybe uh, grab a couple of cold ones to reward ourselves for a job well done, albeit simulated. Drink some simulated Bud Light. I know. I know. Let's see what's on the ground here. Hey, that's kind of cool. Some flying cars there. You guys, I, I want one of those. Yeah. Not bad. There we are. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. I think we can squeeze it down to 8,000. We're in this valley now. About 25 minutes to go. Not much left to talk about. We've already briefed it, already talked about our plans. We're in the valley, descending on down to 8,000. And uh, just keeping the speed up. I'm going to pause you and uh, I'll be back. I'm going to fill up my coffee cup. I just heard my wife get up, so I'll say hello to her. Thought I'd bring you back just to see this. It's uh, I've descended down to 7,000 and uh, Test Kent is up in here. These are supposedly 5,000 feet. A second. Let's go down a little. Gotta love it. It's stuff I do for you guys. But uh, I had to go back in because what it's saying is, you know, the average terrain right here is 5,000. And it looked a little tight to me. So um, I came back outside. And from this angle, yeah, it looks like no problem. Probably a little closer than I wanted to cut it. Like I said, if it was in the weather, I'd definitely be much more conservative. I thought that was kind of a pretty scene there. Let's go around front. Hi guys. Yeah, looking good. Looking a hell of a lot better than I should. Woohoo! 
and have a little fun. Johnson's just want to get off this plane and go have some Uzbekistan food. Where's Borat from? I don't know. I'm not going to look him up or anything, but that would be a story, wouldn't it? All right, so 28. Still got 22 minutes to go. We are at an hour 35, so yeah, yeah, let's... Let's pause for a little bit. Let's pause it. Still flying. Where are we? Way up here. Coming up over the mountains. I've descended down to 5,000 feet. Got about another 30 miles to intercepting uh, final. I don't care who you are. This simp stuff is fantastic. Now it's leveling at 5 there. There it goes. Leveling at five. Approach speed. Not too bad. We're below the max landing weight of 540. Letting it smoke on in. Still got uh, 78 miles to Limgu, which is the IAF. I'll be at 230 knots or 220 about at Limgu. So, uh, anyway, it was kind of fun looking around, huh? Look outside. You can see we're over the plains now. Uzbekistan. All right. Wonder what else Mrs. and Mrs. Johnson can see here. That's pretty. I think they've about had it. Never gonna fly with us again. Wonder if we can look in here. That's cool. Everyone looks really happy. Very content. I wonder if we can go up here. Nope. All right, come on, stop playing around, Jeff. Give me five minutes. All right, guys, finally, here we are. Coming into Tashkent. I want to show you the box. I've set it up for our El Elnev VNAV to intercept the ILS. Going to cross Limgu at 190 and 4. Abyss, you can see there's only from Limgu only seven, uh, 15 miles to the runway. Do not want to go around today. Um, and Nor Nanbi at 4,000. If you remember, the um, field elevation is. 1369 so Nambi is only about uh, 1369 so only about 2700 feet above the ground and going down to a DA of 1570 and the missed approach is in the box 2100 will go in the window stop straight ahead on the runway otherwise it will be a left hand turn off and 8 right there it is so let's talk a little about LNAV VNAV approach. Non ILS to start is off, right? Uh, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i been controlling the speed manually. I'm going to bring this all the way back to 210. Ah, 200. Control. So I've got. We're clear for the approach. I'm going to put in the window 1600. See 1600, but we're not doing anything. I didn't push it. Here comes the path coming down. Below 265, we can go flaps to one. Just gonna let it follow the path down. There's the path. It's coming down normally. This is the glide slope. We call it a ghost glide slope, ghost localizer. Right now, that's our primary. 
Uh, below 245, we can go to flaps to 5. 245 is right there. Flaps to 5. And our next number is below 230. And you can see the path is coming down. We only have 116 feet. Below 230. Right there. Flaps 15. Now below... 225, flaps 20, and it should start descending on down and keep us on the path until we get into position to land. And I think I'm going to uh, keep it nice and slow. So I've been speeding the beam. We, we call it uh, two buttons, two windows. The two buttons when you clear for the approach are LNAV, VNAV, two windows. Set your minimums when you clear for the approach, and speed intervene, set your speed. Here it comes. It's descending nicely. And what's it going to do? It's going to cross no nib at 4,000 and then make it start making its approach on in. So somewhere in there, the ghost glide slope and the ghost localize will turn into something we can capture or feel comfortable with. Now, if it's having trouble keeping up, we're always welcome to uh, put the gear down and get a little more flaps out. Our next two speeds, uh, if we get our gear down or... 225. By the way, I did terminate the dump. So we're all good. We're not spraying fuel on it. all those families down there. That's yeah, all going to be 4,000 all the way around. One last outside look. Nice job, airplane. I don't see any holes or anything. Look it over. Don't know what caused the explosive depressurization. I know it wasn't the cockpit windshield, right? I don't know. Got all the lights on. Flight attendants prepared for landing. Make a nice PA, telling the people they're just going to stop on the runway and remain seated. We'll make travel plans shortly. That's all they care about. Let's turn it on to final. Isn't that pretty? Here's the runways out there that's eight rights so we'll be landing on I'm gonna go Omni approach there it is low capture and when I go glide slope capture I can put 2100 in the missed approach window yeah, that's close enough let's get the gear down Call tower, they know we're coming. Gears down, we're below 200. Almost now, we can go 20 flaps 25. Good lights, light slope capture, low capture, so I'll put uh, 2100 in the window. All right. Mm -hmm. Keep bringing the speed back. Doing a nice job. Below 180, flaps 30. And before landing, checklist, spoilers are armed, brakes are on three. And we're clear to land by Tashkent. Get ready for our first ever Tashkent layover. That was quite the adventure, wasn't it? I'm going to take my slippers off so I can put them up on the rudder pedal. There goes the immersion, huh? And I'm going to come up here and deactivate the autopilot. And I'm flying. All right, once again, uh, I'm going to stop straight ahead. I'm going to tell the, it's the captain, remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. That way, the flight attendants, everyone's kind of wound up. It was quite the traumatic experience. Remember, we still have all the oxygen masks flopping around there, and people were terrified so try to do a nice landing stop straight ahead see what Tashkent ground uh, has in store for us low capture glide slow capture and we're a thousand above the ground we're stable One thousand. and we're stable imagine doing all this at night in the weather Yikes. 
I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Uh, I enjoyed teaching it to you, and I actually, it's a good review for me. Uh, it's good for me to fly that because I wouldn't want to do it for the first time for real. I hope I never have to do it. I've only got five more months, but if I do, I'll be more confident as a result of having done it here, honestly. Quite honestly. All right, I need to get my seating height a little higher. Notice I had trouble seeing when I flare in this thing. I haven't quite figured out the seating arrangement. The vision, the view. Any comments, suggestions be great. Subscriptions are much appreciated. Minimum. Minimums. You should start breaking the sink around 40 feet in the 300, 30 in the 200. 50. 30. 20. Yeah. All right. Hey, I don't like it when it goes like this where I can't see. I really need to figure that out. I'm right, going to stop straight ahead. Right about now, the Tashkent trucks be running around. I'm not going to park the brakes. It's the captain. Remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. Just be another couple of minutes, we'll be underway. So right now, the fire trucks come, the ARF equipment, check us all out. They say, uh, you look good, sir, uh, and taxi to the gate. And so we go, uh, flaps up after landing checklist, taxi to the gate. Let's go outside, take one last look. All right, everything's coming up. Pretty cool. All right, guys, I enjoyed that. A little long, how we were up on, uh, Oh, geez, uh, a minute for hour 47, but it was worth it. Hope you learned something. It's Father Time. Uh, we'll see you guys later.